My name is Noah Campbell, and I'm the founder and CEO of Built Robotics. I started the company about four years ago, and uh, the whole idea was to take the same technology that goes into self-driving cars and bring it into heavy equipment. I saw an opportunity because I'd kind of grown up around the construction industry. Uh, my dad was a carpenter and a contractor, and every summer in high school I worked for him. Uh, so I, I kind of knew, I'd, I'd grown up around it, I'd spent some time just on job sites. And when I was learning more about uh, self-driving cars and autonomy, I kept on thinking, you know, a lot of this really makes more sense in the off-road heavy equipment environment. So that was kind of the first the first glimmer of the idea. Um, I, I'd gone to school for engineering, I worked at Google as my first job, and then I started another company and sold it to eBay. Um, and then after that, I was, you know, I was thinking about what I wanted to do next, and I was kind of, this was a bunch of different ideas all sort of circling around my head um, about robotics and how you can apply it to construction. And I actually came out to Con Expo in 2017. Um, right when I first was starting, I was, you know, wanted to learn about the industry. I remember walking around and looking at all the booths and talking to different people. And then that was sort of was where the idea started to crystallize. You know, we said, hey, excavators make sense, uh, trenching, foundation excavation, that's where we want to focus. And now we've raised $48 million from some great investors, Founders Fund, NEA, and Next47 are our largest investors. The team's grown about 30 people and now we're deploying real robots on real job sites all around the country. Well you can see our, one of our robots right here. So this is Dorothy, one of our first excavators. Uh, she, her name is Dorothy because her first project was actually in Kansas. Underneath the paint job this is just a CAT 323 excavator uh, and kind of the, the idea here is that we just take existing equipment from leading manufacturers like CAT, Deer, Komatsu, uh, Hitachi, you know, you name it, we'll support it. And then what we do is we develop the electronic kit that goes on there. So and you can see all the flashing lights, the, the plastic boxes. That Those enclosures are actually what house our computers. And then most importantly, we write the software that actually makes these machines operate autonomously. So tell me about how that works. I mean, can you explain how that From works? a technical yeah. standpoint, yeah. 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 So, so the, the key sensors are GPS, so the machine knows where it is. Angle sensors, so it can tell if it's pitched or rolled. Um, joint angle sensors, so it can actually do what's called forward kinematics and figure out where that bucket is and then cameras and LiDAR so it can observe its environment. And then we take all that information and put, put that into our planning algorithms so the machine can actually safely plan what to do and control itself as it moves around the job site. We're, we're trying to make it easier and easier all the time. Um, so it does take a little bit of skill and certainly you need to know your way around a job site, you need to know how to you know, set up a, an electronic system, you need to understand the basics of surveying, all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's I mean, one of the things we're really excited to announce here at, at Con Expo 2020 is a partnership with the International Union of Operating Engineers. So they're the union for operators in the US and Canada. They have 400,000 members. And the substance of the partnership is actually a training program that we're developing. So we can make sure that union operators all around the country have the skills that they need in order to operate robots. And we really believe that robots, they're not they are not here to steal jobs. People always think that, but really robots are just tools. And you know, in the same way that an excavator is actually a very sophisticated piece of machinery, a robot is just kind of the next generation of that technology. And you still need people who know how to set them up, and you still need people who know how to do all the tasks that the robots can't do, and, and know how to manage those machines on job sites. So that's what we're doing with the union, we're really excited to be partnering with them. So we apply our technology to loaders, skid steers, dozers, and, and excavators. Um, and we've done a little bit with compactors as well. But the, the main focus for us today is really excavators. And we've identified excavators because they're so versatile, and you see them on every job site. And they also tend to work alone. And what, you know, safety is number one for us. We think a lot about what's the right way to deploy our equipment and do it in a safe way that doesn't disrupt customer workflows. The way that we do that is we set up a three layer safety system on every job site. So we have a safety perimeter that we install and the robot stays inside and people stay outside. You can think of it like a WL line. You know, you don't cross over and people, everybody can drive past each other safely. Then we have a wireless e-stop. So anybody who's walking around the robot or working alongside it, they can hit that e-stop and they actually kill the engine and stop it right away. And the third piece is the sense and avoid system on board the robot. So the, the system can use LiDAR and cameras to detect obstacles around the robot and stop in case you know there's anything that comes by. And 
perimeters are a really good fit because you can put an excavator in one of those safety perimeters and let it go to work. So, you know, you can you can put a safety perimeter that's a mile long and just tell it to dig a trench and it just goes for it. Or you can, you know, put a safety perimeter in place and it can dig a foundation. Um, we're starting to get into loading trucks too, where you have, you know, a, a defined zone for where trucks can back in and nothing else can go in there. So we really like excavators as a, one of our first tools that we're actually starting to scale on the market. Yeah, so our kit is actually an upgrade that you can install on pretty much any late model equipment from leading manufacturers. And we think that's really important. You know, we don't want to go in there and take an expensive piece of equipment and make it so you can't use it for other tasks. So, you know, we still leave the cab right there. You can still get in there and operate it. You just flip a switch, you can operate it like any old piece of equipment. And, and in terms of cost, we basically, our model is that we actually rent out the equipment. So the right away, you're saving money, you know? And generally what we do is we try to target a 10, 20% cost savings for our customers versus, you know, the standard means and methods for that particular type of work. So that's part of the, the sort of onboarding process for a new customer. So we do a lot of training, uh, a lot of explanation for troubleshooting, for understanding how to use the system, you know, the skills to use the computer program, all that kind of stuff. Great. And, and that's also something that we're going to be augmenting and continuing to build out with the union as our partnership uh, continues to roll out here. Yeah, I, I like to say this line, which sounds kind of crazy, but I believe that robotics is going to be the biggest thing in construction since hydraulics. When you go back to cable driven or even before that, you know, steam engine kind of machines, like that was the early 1900s. And then diesel hydraulics came out around after World War II, and that just totally changed the landscape. And I think that the you know 21st century is going to all be, uh, be all about taking these machines, adding sensors, adding computers, and letting them do scopes of work by themselves. It's a CAT 323 excavator that we've just painted and you know, installed our upgrade system and everything. Um, the flashing blue lights, they usually indicate that the system's uh, energized and it's about to move. Here we just have them flashing just kind of for fun because you know we're at Con Expo. We've got LiDAR, we've got cameras, we've got GPS, we've got some proprietary radio uh, antennas there. Um, and then that big plastic box, that's where all of our, our high-end computers and relays and uh, all the different electronics that make the system work go. Another really important feature here is uh, at one of our e-stops. We have two hardwired e-stops on the tail of every machine. And if you just hit that, what that does is actually turns off the fuel pump and instantly kills the engine. In addition, we have a wireless e-stop, which I don't have on me right now. But if you hit that again, you stop the engine, uh, machine stops right away.